All right, salute and good evening. What's popping? It's your boy, Big Rich. Time to get into some business. Tonight, it's a mob spotlight. You know, yesterday we did the story about the Chicago mob duo back on the street. You know, Joseph Jerry DeHaan Scalisi and his best friend, Art the Genius Raquel. I hope I'm saying that right, Raquel and not Rachel. I would hate to, you know, Rachel. Huh? Raquel, I'm going to say. And we were talking about how they're, you know, back out on the street. Oh, you know, I mean, Joseph, a.k.a. The Hand, he was in a notorious crew called the Wild Bunch, an elite Chicago mob hit squad working out of the outfits Cicero crew. So I had text shattered last night, and I said, hey, man, you know what? First of all, see if you could find something about the 1980 Marlboro Diamond Heist in London, and also if you could find out some about the Wild Bunch. Then I'm going through all my articles, and he had sent me some about the Wild Bunch on November 10th. You know why? Because he's a boss. <laughs> this guy got his shit together. You know what I'm saying? So salute to my boy, Shadow. Mob Spotlight. Let's get right into business. Oh, before we do that, wipe your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. Have no fear. Do the right thing. I got a little bit left of my Pineapple Express. I saved it. I saved it. Sometimes I like to take butter and I put it away and I save it for a while. You know what I mean? Anyway, delicious. Let's go right into business. Born to be wild, the Chicago outfit hit squad littered the streets with bodies back in the day. In the 1970s, the Chicago mob created an epically lethal enforcement unit known as the Wild Bunch. The group of heavy hitters was made up of half a dozen young assassins led by Harry the Hook Ailman and nephew of Cicero Capo, Joe Ferriola. Dubbed the Wild Bunch after the 1969 Sam Peckinpah helmed movie about a ragtag gang of bandits in the Old West, Ailman was joined by a fierce clique of compatriots in the exclusive Windy City hit team, including Jerry the Hand Scalisi, William Butch Petroselli, Anthony Little Tony Borsellino, Jimmy the Ice Pick Inendino, and Jerry Scarpelli all capable and eager to please their bosses. They were given the outfits hardest and most important murder contacts, and they took pride in their job. By the end of their run on the streets, however, they began turning on each other. It goes with their line of work, I suppose. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Only Scalisi and Jimmy Indendino remain alive today. And of course, you know, we did the article yesterday about Joseph Scalisi getting out. Now, here's the Wild Bunch hit list from 1971 to 1981, 10 years of Stone Cold Murders. On October 19, 1971, Chicago mobster Salvatore Sambo Cesario, 53, is hit over the head with a blunt object and shot to death by two masked men as he sat with his wife in a lawn chair in front of his home smoking a cigar. Cesario had been caught carrying on a love affair with the wife of an imprisoned outfit power. If that's true, you know the rules. Gotta go. September 27, 1972. Labor Union Connected Chicago Mob Associate Billy Logan, 37, a Teamster steward and ex-husband of Ailman's cousin, is shotgunned to death in front of his home. December 20, 1973, Chicago cop and made man Richard Kane, 49, tied to Illinois Mafia boss Sam Giacana, is shotgunned to death at point-blank range by two masked men in Rose's Sandwich Shop on the west side of Chicago. February 24, 1974, Chicago mob associate and expert counterfeiter Socrates Sammy Paper Rontis, 43, is found with his throat slashed and with puncture wounds in his chest in the trunk of his wife's car at O'Hara Airport parking terminal. April 21, 1974, Chicago mob associate and counterfeiter Billy Simone, 29, is found dead in the backseat of his own car 
with his hands and feet bound and a gunshot wound in the back of his head. Simone was a partner and protege of Sammy Paperantis. July 13, 1974. Chicago mob associate Orion Williams, 38, a suspected mob informant, Scraciad, is found shotgun to death in the trunk of his girlfriend's car. September 28, 1974, Chicago mob associate Bobby Harder, 39, a jewel thief and burglar was believed to have become an informant, Scraciad, is found shot in the face in Beanfield near Dwight, Illinois. Previously, Harder had escaped a hit attempt by Ailman and Jimmy I. January 16, 1975, Chicago mob associate and collector Carlo DeVivo, 46, is killed by two masked men who opened fire with a shotgun and a pistol as he walked out of his house. How's that for a good morning? May 12, 1975, Chicago mob associate Ronnie Magellino, 43, an outfit fence is found blindfolded and shot behind the left in his set ablaze residence. June 19, 1975. Chicago cop and outfit loan shark Chris Carty, 43, is shot eight times in the back and once in the face by two masked men as his wife and children looked on inside Jim's beef stand in Melrose Park. Huh? August 28, 1975, Greek Chicago mob associate Frankie Gulakos, 47, Malakis, 47, a federal informant, Discraciad, is shot six times by a masked man near the Leo's restaurant where he worked as a cook. August 30, 1975, Greek Chicago mob associate and bookie Nicky, Nick Keji Galanos, Malakis, 48, is found shot nine times in the head in the basement of his home. October 31st, 1975, Chicago mob associate and bookie Anthony Redinger, 34, is shot to death in Mama Luna's restaurant by two masked men. January 31, 1976, Chicago mob boss associate Leo Di Bartolo, 29, a heavy gambler deeply in debt to outfit bookmakers, is found shot in the head with his neck punctured four times with a broken mop handle in the rear of the store where he was employed. May 1, 1976, Chicago mob associate Jimmy Irwin, 28, an ex-convict who was suspected in the murders of two other reputed mobsters, is killed by two maxmen with a shotgun and a 45 caliber pistol. He was shot 13 times as he stepped out of his car. July 22, 1976. Kansas City Mafia soldier David Bonadonna, 61, is fatally shot and found in his car trunk in Missouri. His murder was one of several unsolved gangland slings connected to a local mob war in Kansas City stemming from the fight to control Casey's then trendy River Quay Entertainment District. March 29, 1977, Chicago Mafia soldier and hitman Chucky the typewriter Nicoletti, 60, is shot three times in the back of the head while sitting in his car parked in front of the Golden Horns restaurant in the suburban North Lake. June 15, 1977, Chicago mob associate Joey Theo, 33, a burglar involved in stolen auto parts, is found with two shotgun wounds to the head in the back seat of a car parked on the city's south side. July 25, 1977, Chicago mobster Sam the Mule Anerino is gunned down in front of his Mirabelli's furniture store in Oak Lawn, blown away with five shotgun blasts to the chest and neck. Anarino got caught in the crosshairs of the Chop Shop Wars. Now we got to do a report on the Chop Shop Wars. I love it. Each story leads to another story. This is like, uh, it, it, it's beautiful. Never ends. I love it. January 15, 1978. Outfit burglar John Mandel disappears 11 days after leading a break-in of Ocardo's house as payback for Ocardo ordering Mandel and his crew to return a giant score from a robbery of a jewelry store they had pulled off in the days before Christmas of 1977. The owner of the jewelry store was a friend of Ocardo's and requested the Big Tuna's aid in retrieving the stolen merchandise. Mendel's body was, wasn't found until February 20th, discovered in the trunk of his car on the south side street corner, naked, hocked, stabbed, and strangled to death. January 20th, 1978, 
outfit burglar Bernard Buddy Ryan, second in command in the Mendel burglary ring, is found behind the wheel of his Lincoln Continental, sitting on the side of a west suburban street with four bullets lodged in the back of his head and his throat was slit. February 2, 1978, outfit burglar Stevie Garcia, Ryan's right-hand man, is found slain in the trunk of his car in a Sheraton Hotel parking lot by O'Hara Airport, stabbed to death with his throat slit. February 4, 1978, outfit burglar and fence Vince Morietti and his friend Don Reno are beaten to death. Their throat slashed in a Cicero bar in what became known in Chicago's mob circles as the Strangers in the Night Murders due to the fact that the song was playing on the bar's jukebox as Morietti and Renna were being killed. Morietti was an ex-cop and seen wearing a Cardo's monogram gold diamond encrusted cufflinks around town in the days after the high-profile heist. While Morietti was a high-ranking member of Mendel's crew, Renner, a small-time crook, wasn't and just happened to be with Morietti when he was summoned to be clipped. Bad luck. April 6, 1978. Outfit burglar Robert Bobby Toggs Hertogs is found in the trunk of his car in a grocery store parking lot on Grand Avenue, shot in the back of his head and his throat slashed. Hertogs were connected to the Mendel crew and had fallen behind on a juice loan. Can't fall behind that, man. You got to pay the juice. April 14, 1978. Outfit burglar Johnny McDonald, the final Mendel crew member to get bumped off, is found lying dead in a west side alley, shot in the back of the head and his throat cut. McDonald allegedly was forced to set Buddy Ryan up to be killed. October 5th, 1978, the Cardo residence's Sicilian caretaker Michael Volpe vanishes on his way to work in the days after testifying too candidly in front of a federal grand jury investigating the strings of slings linked to the break-in. He can't be that candid. May 22, 1979, Outfit Lieutenant and Hitman Anthony Little Tony Borsellino is found in a Will County cornfield shot in the back of the head. Borsellino was part of the infamous Wild Bunch, a West Side troop of assassins dispatched on the Chicago mob's most pressing murder assignments and suspected in taking part of the slings tied to the fallout from the break-ins. On September 18, 1979, outfit lieutenant and hitman Gerald Jerry the Dinger Carusiello is shot in the back of the head and left on the concrete in an Addison, Illinois apartment complex parking lot. Carusiello was a driver and bodyguard for Ocardo's acting boss, Joseph Joey Doves Ayupa, and suspected in at least one of the fallout slings. July 2, 1980, Windy City mobster Willie Billy Chopper's Dauber and his wife Charlotte are killed as they drove home from a court hearing. Dauber was an enforcer for the Outfit Chicago Heights crew and had been in charge of the Chop Shop War on behalf of the area mob brass. Word had spread on the street that Dauber was cooperating after taking a drug pinch. Scracia, the streets are always talking. They never sleep. March 13, 1981, infamous outfit enforcer and wild bunch mainstay William Butch Petroselli is tortured and killed for skimming proceeds earmarked for delivering to imprisoned bosses' relatives on the outside. Jesus, he's skimming. June 24, 1981, outfit associate Mike Cagnoni is blown up in his Mercedes Benz. As he drove, as he drove onto the Tri-State Tollway at Odgen Avenue, Cagnoni Cagnoni looked after Chicago mob activity in the produce business. Okay, it's sad though that they, they, they began to turn on each other, but this is a crazy list. All right, so salute. You know the team that brings it to you. You see it on the screen. Like, comment, and share. Of course, salute to Justice Tech Pros, Dominic and the whole crew over there. We didn't forget the banner. We're working on it. As soon as it's done, you're going to see it. I, I'll, I'll even email you one. I'll email you a copy. All right, Dom? I'm still working on it. I just uh, reached out to Vic. Everybody have a good evening. 
like comment share but you gotta like the video let me of course i need to know what everybody's smoking on and have a good evening we're gonna talk real soon all right so